All right, my friends, we are here to talk about people who have lost their passion for magic, people who may be at a low tide for their enjoyment of magic, not people who are leaving magic, people who don't want to leave magic, want to have a good time, but aren't having the good time they want to be. And I'm going to let you in on a little spoiler. I fall into that category. I'm part of the category of people who wants to be enjoying the game more than I am because I realize that I have been led down a path of discontentment, right? So basically in the past, uh, oh wait, hold on. You know what? I want to do a little, I want to do a little more audio tweaking. I know we just did some, but a little bit more, a little bit more because I just realized, oh, stay still microphone. I just realized that this is probably going to be better here like this. Oh no, it's doing it again. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Oh. All right. All right. Okay. Now, the microphone, microphone check. Might be pushing a little too loud now. So let's tweak it back on down. And then when we get in real close and deep, the way that your mother likes it on a Sunday, hell, any night of the week, am I right? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. There we go. There we go. So that is, uh, that's work in there. That's probably somewhat better. Maybe it can't be any worse. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. So yeah. Um, like being led down this road of discontent. What I mean by that is magic 30 was really irksome. And I spent a bunch of time being surrounded by all the angry people online and all this craziness and people are rightfully upset right but at the same time i'm getting too much of the online angry energy and not enough of the when you're actually in person playing magic and everybody is chill energy and so it's impossible to get this like you can get an infinite amount of anger from the internet it's an endless sea of anger but joy like personal joy of magic is harder to cultivate in a way so i think this is like an echo of before when I quit magic, right? Where like I was angry and I bounced out of the game and then I reconciled my emotions and was like, actually, I don't have a problem with magic the game. I have a problem with the company and the way they make the game. And so now what I find myself wrestling with is a situation where I'm one of those people who is overly invested in magic. And I don't mean financially, I mean emotionally. Magic has been a big part of my life for a long time. And it's interwoven with a lot of relationships that I have with people in my life. So like, I've, I've magic's been around for two thirds of my life. It's been a presence in my life more so than most things, right? Like. My love for magic has been long and abiding the same way that it is with stuff like Zelda and Mario and all that stuff. But I'm not nearly as into it. Like magic has been this constant sort of thing that's led to all kinds of different experiences and friendships and all this, right? So there's a lot that goes into it. And the last time when I had my freak out and quit magic, it was a situation where uh, we were around the master sets where... We were popping off with Iconic Masters, Masters 25. Wizards was trying to milk us as hard as they could and weren't really um, weren't really doing things in a way that I was happy with, right? So I got angry about it. I saw what was going on with LGSs and the squeeze they were putting on them and all this thing. Like, we're going to get rid of MSRP. All these decisions that basically hose LGSs and give Wizards of the Coast the benefit of the doubt just kind of go, oh, does magic seem more expensive? It's not because we raised the price. It's those gross LGSs. So I'm that's happening while at the same time, I'm wrestling with this other stuff going on where the LGS owner is like, he's like a family member to me, right? Like I went to his LGS since I was 15 years old. So watching Wizards do this kind of stuff to the LGS and watching the game wither in that way was something that I was having a really hard time dealing with. So there was all of that, right? And I will admit as well, I feel like because of some of the things that have happened in life, Pat, like the magic stuff was going on, but then real life stuff happened. The LGS owner lost his life. Other people I care about have serious health issues that 
aren't going to get resolved. And uh, like all that kind of stuff just piled on. And magic for most of my life has just been a source of enjoyment and release, right? Whereas like this whole internet, like you, when you're in the internet tempest in a teapot firestorm of insanity, you can forget that most people are just playing the game and enjoying it. And it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter underneath at all. And at a certain point, where do you disengage and just find your enjoyment rather than going, if it's not perfect, I'm not going to engage with it. Not saying that I needed it to be perfect. My problem is more like along the lines of, I'm worried about magic long term. I want magic to be around long term. But that is causing me to not be able to enjoy magic in the short term, which is purest absurdity. Why do I want something to be around that I can't even like properly enjoy myself now? So I've been taking steps to try and circumvent that. And honestly, Lord of the Rings is doing a great job of pulling me out of it. One of the biggest bummers about Lord of the Rings, honestly, is what what is going on surrounding Lord of the Rings. The conversation surrounding the characters that have been changed and stuff is just, it's an empty conversation that like both sides are holding up as this big important thing. And it's noisy and obnoxious. And it's just been in my awareness where no matter what, if you want to talk about Lord of the Rings then you're going to get people who are like, well, I know that you like it or whatever, but guess what? I hate it for these. And it's just like, that's fine. It's been talked to death. It's all good. You're entitled to your opinion, but I just don't care. I want to enjoy myself. That's what I'm going to do with it. The same way that when people would come to my videos and they'd be like, yo, I want to enjoy magic, but it seems like everybody's down on magic right now. And I would say to them, avoid all the people who are down on magic right now. Enjoy yourself, right? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Stay away from the people who seem miserable and enjoy what you enjoy. Who cares? If you need everybody on the planet who says they're a part of your hobby to be in lockstep enjoying the hobby, how are you going to enjoy it? It's not possible. So basically, it's this whole thing where Lord of the Rings, like I am zeroing in on the parts that I enjoy and completely ignoring the pointless conversation that Wizards of the Coast is attempting to manufacture around it. But people are so dogged, they literally won't shut the fuck up about it, and they want to talk about it everywhere. And it's like, this is Wizards' agenda. They're using you for marketing. It's boring and empty. And so I just look at it and go, I don't want this. I'm not interested in it. It's not doing anything for me. I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. Anybody thinks it's amazing or the worst, I literally don't care that phrase i couldn't care less i've reached that point absolute don't give a fuck tell me what you think of dora the explorer's backpack i care more about that and spoiler i i don't even know if that's a thing for sure i'm like i think she has a backpack does it talk maybe maybe that's that kid show right like i only know it from memes where they do adult stuff but anyways regardless i'm saying it's all just empty to me right and I, I can get upset about things that matter. Card quality, insane prices. What I can't get upset about is Wizards literally trying to trigger me into free advertising. It just doesn't work, right? So it, I mean, it doesn't work on me. Let's be very clear. It is working on a massive scale to the point where this is so widespread, you can find it wherever you want, but it's literally so dull. You know, for me, whatever, right? If you took me back five years ago, maybe I would find it exciting and be like, oh, stuff is popping off. But it's just like, I'm so cynical now that all I see is a dead-eyed corporation going, dance marionettes, and people going, we're so mad at you, corporation. We're going to show you. And the corporation's just like, yes, please show us. And then other people going, we'll defend you, corporation. And the corporation's like, yes, please defend us. We're hurt. Like, it's it's... It's nothing. It's nothing. So that honestly has marred the entire experience. It's made me have less interest in making videos on magic, talk about magic, all of it. Just because when you get so many people engaging in that way, it's just like, oh my God, like, good Lord. It's a completely different scenario when you have particular, like, 
in the past, it would be like, oh, we have a secret layer everybody's worked up about or whatever. But this is every time, oh, is there a spoiler card for it? Hey, you know that conversation that's been happening for two months and every point, except there's only like maybe one point made on each side? Well, guess what? Here I am to say it again. And it's like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> what up, Sheldon? Good job on that picture, buddy. Good job. <laughs> As Gwendolas, you think they did a great job with the Lord of the Rings set? I think there's a lot of fun stuff. I agree, I'd rather them not tinker with characters, but eh, what the fuck are you gonna do? Honestly, I don't get upset when they do it to other properties, right? I don't care. I don't give a fuck. I'm not gonna pretend like it actually means anything, because it doesn't. You know, it's not, it's, it's literally empty. It's always empty. That's all it's ever been. It's just another variation of the, what can a corporation tell you right now to get your money? That's what they're going to do now. And then they'll move on to something else. And that's how it goes. It's cynical. It's fucking dead-eyed. It's capitalism, baby. It's capitalism, baby! So I'm saying, fuck that noise. I'm here to have a good time. Fuck all the bullshit. Obviously, I'm still talking about the news as it comes along. But I'm leaning in hardcore to magical good times. And anybody who's like, I want to be unhappy about this, cool. But if you want me to be unhappy about it, I'm going to treat you as if you're coming to me when I'm eating a sandwich and be like, I want you to hate your sandwich and I want your sandwich to suck. And it's like, yeah, you need to fuck off now. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I mean, I don't give a shit. You know, Wizards is, Wizards is always doing something fucked up. And for real, for real, I've done more than my fucking share and pointing out tons of shit. So I don't owe anybody anything. You want to be mad about something? Great. I don't give a fuck. You don't want to be mad about something? Great. Actually, neither do I right now. So <laughs> I know what I need. And guess what I'm going to do? Selfishly pursue it. Oh, you selfish bastard. You care about your enjoyment more than taking wizards to task over something that's literally them manipulating you? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely, Millmaster. I'll give you a I'll give you a back rub with a with a spiked club, buddy. <laughs> Some call me Tim. Optimism is called for, bro. That's what's on the menu. That's what's on the menu. I'm enjoying myself. At the end of the day, when I go to the game store and I play with my cube, I'm just having fun with magic. Do you know where I find the people who aren't having fun? Online. Do you know where I find them in person? I don't. Everybody coming out to the game store, they're there to have a good time. That's why they're showing up. The people who are unhappy with magic aren't showing up. They're doing other things with their time, which is also great. Everybody wins. So, yeah, I want to have a good time. I was looking over some just some random things, including that little painting that Bud Cook did of me. And I'm like, remember when we used to just get excited about spoilers and talk about all these different cards and the artwork and the lore? And actually, you know what I did today? I sat down... And I read some of the Ixalan lore because I wasn't reading the lore at that time frame. I was handling other things. So I went back and looked at it. And I'm like, yo, they got a golden city. They have the Immortal Sun, which is a super powerful artifact that was created by Azor the Sphinx Planeswalker giving up his Planeswalker Spark in a bid to trap Nicol Bolas. And then he gives this incredibly powerful artifact to this human empire. And this empire grows. They build a golden city, everything like that. But one of the emperors, obviously, you get further down the chain. They don't have respect for the power they've been given. They feel entitled to it. Misuses the power. Azor tells him, get fucked. Get the fuck out of here. And gives the gold and city to the merfolk the merfolk go yo um there's some crazy power in here and we think this place is sacred and nobody should mess with it so we're just gonna have nobody go in there and stop anybody who tries to go in until kumena's like yo i'm actually going in there because i think that the merfolk should have access to this and he goes in and he basically activates the immortal sun which frees all the elder dinosaurs including zakama who might literally be part of the world soul of ixalan like bro there's some cool shit going on with magic and there's a bunch to enjoy so i'm turning my eye more to enjoyment where i can because if i don't if i don't i only see one way in this end bro and also the whole like if magic's not going to be perfect and it's not going to go on forever then i'm not going to be satisfied that is a crazy mentality nothing is ever fucking perfect so i am unbalanced i'm talking about myself here other people decide their own fucking level but i know that i've become unbalanced and skewed towards the negative and part of that is pessimism from losing people who are important to me but other you know 
too much, putting too much importance on magic in some ways too, caring too much in some ways about things that don't matter and not caring enough about making time for the good parts and enjoyment on the same level, you know? So that's my vibe. That's my vibe. <clears throat> Laurie is switching to Fab. Nice, buddy. Fab has an awesome vibe of like one-on-one -on -one combat that is a lot smaller in scale. And I like the idea that you start with all your gear, you wail on each other, smashing it off. And it's like you start at optimal strength and wear each other down. That's some cool flavor. I have a bunch of um I have a bunch of flesh and blood decks and some history uh, history boosters. That game's funky. Have I been doing sorcery videos on... I did the opening. No, I haven't been doing sorcery videos. I have not. I got other games to talk about. I got Grand Archive uh, in the works. I got another game going on. I'm not... I'm never going to dedicate myself fully to another fucking card game like I have Magic. Magic is my first love. Like, Magic is my fucking wife. Every other card game is a side hoe. They're lucky for any attention they can get, and they'll never be Magic the Gathering to me. And I'm not going to fucking pretend like they are, all right? I, I I remember thinking something ridiculous when Keyforge came out. And now, I understand the reality of the situation. I love Magic the Gathering. It's my favorite card game. No other card game will ever be as good as Magic the Gathering, no matter what anybody says. Magic has 25,000 different pieces, insanely epic fantasy fucking flavor. There is so much to the game. It is a never-ending puzzle of delight. I fucking love it. Every card is a story. Why do you think I get so fucking worked up about Magic? Because I fucking love it. Like, legit, I was talking to somebody today and they're like, Yo, did you hear what's going wrong with the MetaZoo company? No, I didn't. Oh, and they recovered from it. Oh, okay. And they're like, I want to talk about the MetaZoo problems. Oh, I don't. I don't give a fuck, dude. Like, at all. I don't give a shit what's going wrong with any fucking company other than Wizards of the Coast. I could give two flying fucks. If I'm playing another game and somebody comes up, I don't like that. You can fucking end your sentence right there, dickhead. I don't give a shit what you think about what games I'm playing. So Magic is my number one girl always will be and i know people always get excited when they think like yo he's upset at magic maybe that means he's gonna fucking go and be with yeah no i'll go fuck her for a night sure i'll put my thumb in her butt what's up sorcery you got a sweet little ass i'll slap it we'll get together every once in a while but i'm i'm going back to my fucking wife like let's not play games let's not fucking get any false delusions that i'm just gonna become the fuck hey check it out i'm the metazoo historian or the genesis historian or the flesh and blood there is zero fucking chance on earth all right these ladies can hope for like a night on my ball bag every once a month maybe you know what i mean yo magic's ragging out who wants to chundle my bundle tonight girls that's it that's it. I get it. You leave magic and you're like, I'm going to show, I'm going to show her. I'm going to love this other lady so hard, but it'll never be the same. You're fucking fooling yourself. Enjoy these other card games, but never think they're going to fucking fill the void. That magic, like if you're leaving thinking you're going to show a card game, bro, you ain't ready to leave. You ain't ready to leave. It's a fucking card game. You're thinking about it like a relationship with a woman. You know what I mean? Take it from somebody who's way too emotionally invested in the card game. Take it from somebody who fucking knows. If you think you're leaving is showing magic something, you need to sit down and have a think about yourself because you're too emotionally invested and you have an outsized view of where you actually fucking matter in the world. None of us matter. I could fucking stop magic and I don't matter. Legit. And I talk about it all the time. Give them tons of fucking free advertising. And I don't matter. No individual magic player fucking matters to Wizards of the Coast or any of it right so that's the reality of it you gotta find you gotta know i love a wife who doesn't love me back she doesn't love me back she looks at me from my wallet but i don't care because i still wish to fuck her do you understand that's it that's it she's got she's the sweetest you're ever gonna get so these other ladies yeah great they're the new ladies on the block but she's been sucking my dick for 30 years honey you've done it once do you know what i mean do you know what I mean? I'm not going to rage out on the street over, Oh my God, no, MetaZoo died. Oh, what will I do? Oh, flesh and blood collapsed. Oh no. Like, I'm never going to care on the same fucking level. I'm always going to think it's sad when a card game dies because people have lost a game they play. But for real, for real, magic ain't just a fucking game to me. 
That's the, that's the reality of it. And everything else is, you know? I've been working on being less emotionally invested in magic in some way so it won't affect me negatively while retaining my joy. I have a complex and ridiculous relationship with this game that is interwoven with so much of my life, so many of my friendships, all of it. Some call me Tim says, I hope these $2 fills your void. Thanks, Tim. Thanks. I feel my void filling right now with fucking water. Glub, 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 glub. Oh, glub, glubity, glub, glub. Deedly, 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 deedly. I'm the fucking captain of the goddamn sunken ship of magic love. The love boat. Soon I'll be banging your mom's butthole. The love boat. Bum, 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 ba, da, da. All right, you're Lord of the Board, buddy. Has the one ring been open yet? Gold barks. Have you not seen the one ring's been opened by every clickbait and asshole on fucking YouTube already? I'm surprised I haven't done a video saying, I opened the one ring. They all do it. Like, it's not going to be fucking real obvious who it was who actually got it. Wow. It's crazy that you got the one ring on your fucking, like, 1,000 view video. It's crazy that everybody's not talking about it. It's almost like you're straight up a fucking liar. Like a blatant liar. Like, blatantly. Not even the fun kind of clickbait and just, I use this as, congratulations, who's even clicking on this shit, right? <laughs> 90, what's confusing about that? A wife isn't a girlfriend. Come on, man. Come on. Keep up. Keep up. Was waiting for my video, honestly. I can't do it when everybody's doing it. It's fucking tired and trite and lame. It is lame as fuck to make a video going, I opened the one of one ring. No, you didn't. No, you fucking didn't. What is like, I've seen a bunch of people do it. And it's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Congratulations. Beat that fucking dead horse. Milk it for what you can. It's all good. We got our own thing. I get it. I'm a fucking doom monger title guy. We all got our own clickbaity bullshit. But holy fucking shit, I will not sink low enough to go, I cracked the wood. My titles are never just a lie. Unless it's April Fools. Unless it's April Fools, my titles are never just a fucking lie. Right? That's the line for me. Like, you may not be smart enough to figure out what the fuck my title means. Or you may disagree with the level if I think it's a big deal and you don't. But my titles aren't just fucking lies. That shit is obnoxious, bro. It's obnoxious. I absolutely refuse. That's actual clickbait. See... When I started, I thought clickbait was one thing, right? <clears throat> clickbait was when somebody just fucking lies to you. Straight up lies to you, and you click on the thing, and what they said isn't even there. That's clickbait to me. But then I learned that clickbait on the internet is anything any fucking wank bag idiot thinks slightly deviates from exactly what they expected, even if they're too dumb to understand the fucking title. So the word clickbait means nothing to me. When somebody goes, your videos are clickbait, I go, you're probably not smart enough to understand what fucking clickbait is, idiot. You don't understand my titles, you're a fucking moron, so shut up, right? Like, it's that level. But that's actual clickbait. And actual clickbait can suck my fucking dick. What up, Callaway? Ah, Serenity, nah. I don't see wizards like hiding it away forever because that's bad biz. What they want is for it to be, here's the optimal moment for the ring to be revealed. Wizards of the Coast looks at the warehouses and go, have we sold every collector booster box for this set? Are they all sold and we've collected our money? Let the one ring be found right now. Once Wizards has got all their dollars for the collector booster boxes, it's absolutely in their best interest for the ring to come out. Because if it doesn't, then people are just going to go, did you even put it in there? Right? And then the next time they go, one out of one, they'll be like, uh-huh, boy who cried wolf, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. You know? Chaotic, you missed my rant so much. Well, got good news for you, buddy. I fucking archive all these live streams over on my other channel. By the way, by the fucking way... Y'all should probably join my Patreon or channel membership or something. Because all this shit, like when I upload it, YouTube's like, fuck you, buddy. And also these streams, too, for the language. So if you like this stuff, then support it with money because YouTube won't. <laughs> Either way, I'm going to archive this shit. 
Uh, Callaway, how do I deal with all the shit posting that I receive? And you know what, man? The the amount of negativity that you deal with from people can be confounding sometimes, depending on the kind of person you are. My biggest problem is that my reactions to people being dickheads is really combative. Like, I'm like, yo, you got a problem, asshole? You want to fucking talk shit? Like, I don't shrink away from confrontation. Oh, you want to talk shit? But the problem is, I look like a fucking maniac. Like, someone will say something in the comments, like, you want something, you little bitch? And then I go, I would, like, when I started out, I would go, like, someone would leave a comment going, you fucking suck, virgin, or whatever, right? And I would open up their fucking account and dig around in it. And I would look at every channel they were subscribed to. And I would look at the videos they had liked. And I would look at the videos on their playlists. And I would basically break who they were down. Like, okay, who is this person? I would figure out who they were and then craft an insult meant to genuinely make them feel bad about themselves. Like, literally. It was the nuclear... It's, it's a fucking insane way for a YouTuber to behave. Where it's like, what the fuck did you just say to me? Just go and like literally show up on their own fucking videos talking shit to them. And it's like, what are you, they're like, what are you doing here? Why are you here on my home video? I'm like, oh, this is how we play the game. You came to my living room and you shat in my living room. So guess what, you fucking clown? I'm here to shit in your living room. You're a giant fucking loser going around leaving comments like that on people's videos. I see on your playlist that you have videos about how to meet girls. Well, don't worry about it. No one will ever want to be with you, you piece of fucking shit. The world's giving you a fucking signal. No one will ever mate with you. You are unlovable, you fucking clown. Like, this is what I would do. It's literally like Mike Tyson beating the shit out of a child. Some of those might be kids. And I was just like, the fuck did you say to me? <laughs> Top rope! And I'm just like, boom, boom. Oh, he's not moving. Couple more in the ribs. Do you know what I mean? Like, that was my style. Because before I did YouTube, I would only ever run into people every once in a while on the internet acting up and being idiots. And I'd be like, you want to fucking dance, dickhead? And then I would smack them until they begged me to stop and walk the fuck off. Because it's like, that's how it works. So then I got into this. And every motherfucker, I'd have to tell him, listen, Tim with a dumb fuck, like over and over and over until my brain just went, bro, bro, we're getting robbed. They're robbing us of our fucking time. Like we're getting robbed. It was a compulsion. Carly can tell the type of like, Carly can tell when I'm typing to somebody saying, let me explain something to you fucking moron. She knows the type of heavy fingering that comes with the tell it a moron what's up. So I struggled with this. For a long time. And then one day, I was just free. I realized this is a fucking waste of my time. I'm letting complete clown idiots. Like it took dealing with morons where I took people's comments seriously. If somebody left a comment complaining, like people would go, I hate this video and I hate you. And I'd be like, this video is about trying to stop people from getting scammed. So do you hate people getting scammed? Or I genuinely don't understand your position. And I wasn't even rude to that person. I just said that that way. And they were just like, why even responding to me? You're an idiot. Other YouTubers would have ignored me. And I was like, I am fucking fundamentally unprepared for this. Like fundamentally unprepared for a reality where like I only ever left one YouTube comment in my whole life before I started YouTube because I strongly cared about what I had to say. And so I made the mistake of assuming everybody's like me and strongly cared about what they had to say, not realizing it's a bathroom stall wall. Like they've said everything on earth about me, Calloway. And it's like, yeah, I wanted to fucking rip into them. And I remember when I, um, when I broke free of it, Calloway says, let me serve the board right into the void. Hell yeah, buddy. New Lord of the board. So I'm sitting there. And the day I became free, the universe gave me a reward in the form of going, here, here's your former self. Have fun. So basically what happens is, like, understand, I can't let anybody get away with talking shit to me. Think about that. Think about having that attitude as a YouTuber, as your presence grows. Think about just going, I'm not going to let anybody talk shit to me. And I'm going to tell every motherfucker what for. Think about how, in, like, I had no idea the Sisyphean task I was creating for myself, right? With this pure, with this pure madness. So I encounter a guy who cannot help himself and must respond. Now, this was years ago when I was friends, uh, my channel was small and I was friends with a much bigger channel, 150,000 subscribers or whatever, but that channel was running into problems, other nonsense. <laughs> and this guy was saying I was a drone of that channel. So I just saw that in the comment area. 
this guy's you just a drone and blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, I just responded back to him to squirrel him up, right? And so I started talking shit to him. And uh, he's just like, whatever, you're an idiot, I'm leaving. And I'm like, that's right, man, leave. Because if you leave, I win the conversation. And he couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle it. He literally couldn't handle me saying, I win the conversation. And so over the course of literally eight hours, like I sat, I sat at my computer smoking chase and cackling like a fiend while I continually responded to this. My whole day was refreshing. Wait, not because I had to respond. I didn't have to. He had to. And he kept trying to get out of the conversation and I wouldn't let him. I went to Twitter. I went to my Twitter and I'm like, bro, I tweeted out about you. I tweeted out about you. And he went and signed up for Twitter and tweeted at me. He's like, I signed up for Twitter and tweeted at you. We're like, like my Twitter, retweet it so people can see it. I'm like, I ain't doing that, man. I win. I win the conversation. You should leave. I ain't leaving. I ain't leaving. And he's just like, he's getting so squirreled up, right? And now it starts to get so far down into it that I go, guess what, bro? You're right. I am a drone, but we're so deep in the conversation, no one will ever know. And I kept doing it over and over and over saying, I win the conversation. And I don't know like what, like, like if he just went to bed or whatever, but it was eight hours. We did it for eight hours and it was fucking pure glory. I loved it. I fucking loved it. It was awesome. It was like, this guy can't help himself. He can't, all I have to do is say, I win. And he comes back, you don't win. And it's like, this is nothing. This is nothing. Oh my God. <laughs> Callaway, it sounds so hard. Bro, I, I had a lady come up to me in the Arby's and go like, yo, like how do you deal with people being like haters to you and whatever? Because she heard me talking to my dad about how I was doing the YouTube stuff. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck what people think. I'm like, you see that guy over there across the restaurant? Let's say that guy thinks I'm an asshole. I don't fucking care what he thinks. So <laughs> that's the deal. That's the deal. I don't care what people think, right? Fuck you. You don't like me? Fuck you. I'm going to change for you? Suck my dick, right? So, like, Carly noticed me at first because I was in a whole group front, in front of a whole bunch of people. And my buddy's like, I'm sitting there doing my magic tricks. And he's like, hey, aren't you, uh... Like, aren't you embarrassed? And I'm like, I don't give a fuck what any of these people think. Point at any of them. I do not give a shit. So, in some ways, like, my biggest problem was how do I learn to stop telling people to go fuck themselves and just whatever, man. Like, I've reached the point now where I don't even waste time. If somebody looks, if it looks like you're coming at me sideways, you're coming at me. You know the whole, like, shoot first, ask questions later? It's just shoot, don't ask questions. If the start of your sentence looks like you're coming at me, you don't get to the end of it. I either delete or ban your account and move the fuck on, right? Take a page out of Desolator's book. I see you there, buddy. How you doing? How you doing, son? So, like, the thing is, ultimately, what you got to recognize, Kellaway, there's multiple things you can do to get yourself in the right place. One is, don't look at the comments when you're not in a mentally strong place. So make sure you've had a meal so you're emotionally stable. Make sure you're fucking properly rested. Understand that I don't do any of this shit and that my emotions rule me and I've made terrible, terrible choices as a result and treated people poorly. But if you take care of yourself, genuinely are properly hydrated, getting enough sleep, eating right, I do some of those. Not really good at the hydration thing, but whatever. Anyways, you do that stuff, you're gonna be better mentally balanced things are not going to bother you as much. When you recognize that it's a um, the toilet wall stall kind of thing, but blah, 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 people are scrawling on, it doesn't matter. Recognize as well, they're not talking about you as a person. They're talking about you as a product. They're talking about you the same way they talk about Nike or whatever. If I took it personally, people pick apart literally everything about me. I don't give a shit though, because guess what, Callaway? We all do it, bro. We all do it. Don't lie to yourself, right? The difference is, saying it out loud, you will look on something, you'll be like, holy shit, that guy's fucking fat. Jesus Christ, bro, how the fuck do you breathe? Holy fuck, dude, you've got like six hairs, just shave them the fuck off. It looks so weak, just go bald. Come on, man, go powerful. Pull your shirt down, you fat sack of crap. Pull your fucking pants up, I can see your fucking ass cheeks. You think all this shit, yo, look at that fucking growth on their face. Like, that all happens internally. That's just animal evaluation shit. That's normal. There's nothing wrong with it. Everybody's doing that. And you got to understand, Callaway, when somebody goes, fuck you, you suck, 
Then they leave and they don't think about you for the rest of the day, bro. When you fucking say something sucks, do you sit around letting it eat at you for the rest of the day? No, you don't. Most people don't. That's not how shit works, right? That's not how most things work for most people. So you just go bathroom stall wall. Also, remember this too and it will help. Sometimes when someone's screaming in the comments, they're not screaming at you, bro. The person at the keyboard, they just got off the phone. And their mom's dying of fucking cancer, bro. And their fucking world is spinning. They don't know what the fuck to do. They're fucking sad and angry. The world ain't fucking fair. It ain't. It's far from fair. So sometimes people freak the fuck out in the grocery line. You got 10 items in the 8 item line? It ain't about that. It ain't about that at all. It's about raw animal panic or emotion, fear, terror, loss. All of that. It's just a place for people to vent. When someone's being a fucking dickhead to you in the comments, all they're doing is being a dickhead. It almost always has nothing to do with you when it's the real maniacs. If it doesn't have a genuine criticism that rings true, it's probably somebody using it as an emotional release. If you look at it that way, every comment is beneficial. That being said, though, anybody who rubs you the wrong way with their outbursts, ban them, don't look back. I lost a lot of sleep over banning people because when I started, my thought was, yo, I've always wanted to be an entertainer. I've always wanted to be a comedian. I've always wanted to welcome everybody in. And that's my vibe. I welcome everybody in until you show that you're not supposed to be here. And I used to give people a lot of rope, like a lot of rope. So they would act up and I'd be like, bro, you need to stop acting up or it's going to lead to this. I'm, I'm going to have to get rid of you and I don't want to do that. And then I would get rid of people and because we have a good sense of community, they'd be like, man, I want to come back. I miss it. And they'd send me an email saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry and whatever. And I'd let them come back. But people who are like that, they are perpetual line steppers and allowing them to return just makes them feel special and like they can do it again. The truth is, and this is something I learned from Desolator for real, is that... Um, Banning people can help them grow emotionally. So you may be helping them, but even if you don't, you don't owe anybody anything at all. At all. Like, I've never felt like I owe my fucking audience a thing. I put in the work. I make the videos. I do all this. I'm happy to have a community we built together, but I don't feel like, oh, you watch me, so I owe you shit? No, fuck that. You turn on me, get fucked. I'm happy to party with you forever, have a good time, but if you turn on me, we're done. I will fucking, I will toss you on the corpse pile, and you know what? I will legitimately mourn you later, but I'll never fucking tell you. I'll never let on. There have been people that I banned that I felt genuinely sad to do it. And truth be told, there are a few people in recent times that I've given more rope to that I shouldn't have because again, I was wrong. Again, that Lord of the Rings shit. I've lost some people that I really liked because they got uppity at me and decided it was a front that I wouldn't talk about it. And I wouldn't take the position that they wanted. And so not only did they need to berate me, they needed to go around on everybody's different comments and try and turn them against me. And this happened on multiple videos. And so I'm not tolerating this. This is absolutely unacceptable. I don't owe you a goddamn thing. So yeah, I remember Desolator. I thought Desolator was really ban happy. And I mean, I still feel like he's got a trigger finger, but now so do I. So it's like this. I've had people come along and go, man... I wish I wasn't banned on Desolator's channel. And I'm like, oh yeah, you know what? You're a troll fuck and I know that because we get along, but I know what you're like. And if you would come at me a different way, we wouldn't have gotten along. So yeah, you should learn from this. The internet isn't a place where you should just be able to go and act however you want and everybody has to put up with it because that's how fucking homeless people act. That's how the fucking people who go, no, I can, I can fucking sleep in this doorway and stink and whatever. Yeah, I know what's your business. Fuck you. No, no. You don't just get to go wherever and do whatever you want. It's it's absurdity. It's fucking absurdity. I hate it. I fucking hate it, right? Like, uh, it's it's so obnoxious. It's so obnoxious. Desolator, yeah. Discipline, discipline people because no one checks them in real life and gives them consequences. It's absolutely true. The internet is a place where somebody feels like they can come and watch my videos for a full year. And if I do something they don't like, that they can yell at me. Oh, even you, Hatcher, you're not going to stay. Shut the fuck up. Like, seriously. If you said this to me in person, the you would probably stop mid-sentence just from the look on my face. But I'd go, how fucking dare you? Who the fuck do you think you are? 
right? Cat, what's this about homeless people? I'm talking about the entitled mentality that particular ones of them have. The ones that will walk into buildings, light cigarettes inside the building because it's easier to light a cigarette inside the building, be told they're no longer allowed in that building, do it all over the place, then walk into a building and go, can I come in here to warm up? They won't let me in any other buildings, and then light up a cigarette and freak out when they get kicked out. And every time they do this completely fucking entitled behavior where they're the center of the universe, they refuse to accept the consequences of their own actions. I have a fucking ton of sympathy for the homeless. In fact, Carly tries to fucking steer me away from them so I won't see them because I have a really fucking soft heart underneath the hard shell that I've developed to deal with the fucking world. So yeah, I have a lot of sympathy for the homeless, except the most entitled versions of them where they feel like every part of the world is for them and they're so fucking hard done by. All of us have a fucking hard time. All of us are struggling, smarten the fuck up, right? That's the vibe. So this entitled bullshit, that's what I see online. I'm going to go wherever I go, and it needs to be exactly how I want. Fuck you. Discomfort will make you a better person sometimes. You will fucking learn from it. Having exactly what you want, you're not going to grow. You're not going to become a fucking better person. So I don't want anything to do with you if that's what you're like. Fuck you. I don't know you shit. How the fuck can you watch stuff that I've made for years and then turn around and go, no, now you've done something I don't like and all this other. Now, like, yeah, then just leave. Then just leave. What's the matter with you? Nathan says, speaking of people giving too much rope, good evening, you bunch of scalawags. What's up, Nathan? How you doing, buddy? You're the new lord of the board. Millmaster says, I feel that we <laughs> hang out with you every night are entitled to see you eat that box of candy right now. We're, it's a telethon. You want to see me eat a box of candy right now on the stream? Text 6969 to my PayPal. And by text, I mean pay 6969 to my PayPal. You want to see me tear into a box? Then it's double 69. <laughs> All right. Like, for real, man. I'm a welcoming guy. I want everybody to be happy here. I want as many people as want to be here to come and have a good time right up until you become a problem. Because if you fucking steal my energy, now you're a problem for everybody. You're like that fucking dipshit who comes to the fucking tournament and is like, yo, um, like, hey, uh, I'm five minutes late every time for the tournament. And it's like, okay, so you're five minutes late consistently. You could be here on time, but you're just not going to be. And you're the same guy who comes to me when the route, like, you're done. You're done. Your match for the round. And you're coming to me going, hey, can you get these guys to hurry up? No, asshole. Actually, I can't. You need to shut the fuck up. You need to shut your mouth right now. What? Yeah. Shut up, dickhead. Don't talk about your time. You show up five minutes late every time. There are 20 people here other than you. So you are robbing 20 people of five minutes. You fucking cock. That's a hundred minutes. And you're complaining about whatever your minutes. Shut your fucking mouth. I don't want to hear it from you, asshole. The fact that you're here consistently late shows massive disrespect for the other people here. And if you think I'm going to put up with this from you, you are out of your fucking mind. Get the fuck out of my face. And you know what happened? Do you know what happened after I said that? He came back to me after he cooled down and said, hey, thank you. Thanks for telling me. Because most people won't tell you. They'll just fucking hate you. And they won't help you when you need help. They will just quietly not deal with you secretly not like you i will tell you to your face smarten the fuck up that's me doing you a favor does it hurt oh i'm sorry your little pride got hurt stay weak stay stupid it sucks to be told you suck but you're not going to stop sucking unless i tell you you fucking clown i know this from experience it's obnoxious the internet is an insulating pod that makes the weakest fucking people that think their opinions are amazing and everyone should give a shit nobody gives a fuck about your opinion you wind algorithms and bots tend to you you fucking clown you're a plant you're a glorified cactus your opinions are worthless Marco Esquendola says, I admit I was miffed at the Lord of the Rings set early on. Then I saw the cards and how well they nailed the Lauren artwork and I fell in love. Bro, I'm hyped for it. I'm hyped for it. I'm stoked about the pre-release this weekend, man. I'm going to have a good time. I'm cracking a bundle. I'm having a good time. And I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to ignore the minor comments complaining about the fucking shit that they've done with Aragorn. And the people who are majorly annoying, I'm going to continue to ban them. Because it's like, you're done. I'm not listening to you. I'm so sick of your shit. Holy fuck, man. Like, God. At least the people who think that it's, like, amazing aren't obnoxious that way. 
They're just, hey, I like it. So, God, so fucking tired of it. Just done. Having a good time. You know? Fuck, man. That's later. The people say I'm great are Chinese TikTok bots. No, that's not the only people who say I'm great. That's not nice to say. That's not nice to say. That's so mean. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the banning lesson is something i learned from desolate yeah i'm still too fucking ranty why the fuck do i get this worked up about it why do i even care this much right why don't i just let it go who gives a fuck why does any of it matter <clears throat> whatever i'm a ranty guy and apparently itchy <clears throat> Patrick Olson says, love your rants and some much gold here. Much love, bro. Thanks, Patrick. I know these streams ain't for everybody, but most people have the good sense to not whine about it like a little bitch. Every once in a while, someone will come in and be like, hey, I don't like these streams. Why the fuck are you here then, moron? Get the fuck out. I didn't ask you at any point. Did I say, hey, random dipshit, do you like this stream? Oh, no, that's right. I don't give a fuck. If you like it, great. If you don't, eh, boo-hoo. Oh. You do these other things I like, but I don't like everything you do. Who cares? You know what? Your mom really likes it when I fuck her up the butt. But she doesn't like it when I get rid of the old donkey slap in the back of the head, but she still keeps calling me. <laughs> Anyways, Patrick, you're lord of the board, brother. I like the, the level of entitlement where people are like, just so you know, I mean, it seems like everybody is here and it's having a good time and like whatever, but me, like I'm not. And bro, like, I don't know if you know this, but... You're supposed to cater to me. Like, you know me, right? You know me, and, like, we've spoken a lot. It's always, like, people, I don't even recognize your name. Like, I don't recognize your name, which means you haven't even said enough positive stuff for me to know who the fuck you are. So coming in and being like, what? I like this, but I don't like this, shouldn't have said the second half. Shouldn't have said the second half at all. <laughs> okay. No! Sean, please, please, I'm sorry. I take it all back. I Please don't unsub, bro. Please, please. I can't, I can't lose subscribers. I only say this to my friends to be cool. Why do you think in the videos I'm so nice? I'm always nice in the videos to trick you into staying. Don't, don't fucking go. I can be better. I will change for you, Sean. We've gone through so much together. I remember all the things you've said over the how long have you been here can you refresh my memory on anything ever at all i mean i didn't even realize you were in here but if you please tell me that you literally said something like what i'm talking about earlier in the stream and are a living example of this because that would be fucking amazing anyways anyways now here have one of these enjoy <laughs> How do you listen to somebody ranting about how they don't give a shit and then go, hey, I'm unsubbing. This is, by the way, guys, this is the progression. Somebody goes, oh, I'm upset at you. How do I take something away from you? I'm unsubbing from you. Okay, but I don't know who you are and you never built a, re a relationship with me. So you, if it's just about subs, you're like, I'm taking one fifty-three thousandth of your presence away and also somebody who's entitled. I used to enjoy what you did, but now because of my own actions, I'm not capable of enjoying it. Okay, that's fine. Rob yourself of enjoyment, son. It doesn't affect me. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be like, oh no, what was that guy's name who I fucking don't remember connecting with at all? Right? That's the deal. Like, there are people legitimately who I've had to ban who have left the channel. I feel bad about it. I think about people who were gone four years ago because I'm like, these are good dudes. Like, I was like, that's a good person. I like that person, right? And then it's just like, oh, well, it sucks that they're gone. But then people are like, I need you to know I'm unsubbing. And it's like, the only reason you're saying that is because you know you never did anything to connect, right? Loria, that's an excellent question. What, if you really care about something, how do you balance not letting things bother you and just being a nihilist forever avoiding confrontation? That is a fantastic question. How do you balance caring about something enough to enjoy yourself, invest in it, everything like that, but not so much that like it fucking sends you off on one end, but then also not become an uncaring robot by just going, nothing matters, any of it, right? Like that is a good question. 
Millmaster! It's too late. You can't give him a membership. He's already gone. He's already gone. I already, I already violated one of the tenets that I have for my streams where if somebody's being a troll, I just normally ignore it. But the timing of that was amazing. Yelling, I'm unsubbing. Like, it's all in caps. Like, I need you to see that I'm leaving and that it matters. And it's like, okay. Okay. Sure. Like, honestly, all I, all I want is for people to have a chill time. So if somebody's like, yo, I like the videos and don't like the live streams. Cool, man. Just watch the videos. That's it. You don't need to tell me because all that does is make me dislike you. What's the advantage? Like, do, does, do people literally think that I'm just going to change what I do? Or is it just like, I just need you to know I hate it, even though you're going to keep doing it. Why? Why well, don't go around telling people the stuff I hate? I don't understand. Like the way that people act on Twitter, yelling at each other, getting blocked and banned and going, look, I got blocked by this person. That's not a badge of honor. It just means you don't know how to communicate with people. Like legitimately, there are people who I actively detest on Twitter and who actively detest me and neither of us are banned by the other. We're not blocked by the other or whatever because it's unnecessary. You don't get out in there and get in the, like this crazy sort of, check it out, I got blocked by so-and-so. It's like, check it out, I don't know how to communicate. Okay. Because it's like, they like to present it. This person's such a snowflake. Hey, I just went to this person who was an asshole, guys. All right, what, what do you want, a cookie? What is this? Like, I don't understand. No, I want the, the heart likes. Okay, have fun reinforcing shitbag worthless behavior. I genuinely don't understand this. Like, this fucking insanely entitled, like, fucking mentality that exists now is wild. It's wild. It's wild to me. Like, people think so much of themselves. So much of themselves. I don't fucking get it. How the fuck do you go to a YouTube channel? I wouldn't go to a YouTube channel that had 10 subscribers and tell the guy what to do with his fucking channel. At all. At all. It fucking blows my mind how comfortable people get where it's like, I have a routine of watching your stuff. And it's like, it's like if I baked them bread every day and gave them a free loaf of bread every day. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not, uh, today I'm making fucking something else. Like, fuck you. I only like bread. Well, wait till bread day. No, I hate what you're doing today. Uh, go fuck yourself, asshole. Are you 11? Like... What happened? How entitled can you be, man? This place is designed to cater to one person. Me. This whole, like, YouTube thing where other YouTubers go, Hey, thanks for being here. Like, I'm glad you guys come and whatever. Like, hang out, all that. That's good. But I'm not going to fucking lie to you. But you pay me with your time and shit. It's bullshit. I'm not going to fucking pander to you and stroke your egos over bullshit so you won't be a fucking crybaby. Like, that's crazy. It's crazy to me. That's wild. That's wild. The unsubbing shit is fucking hilarious. They don't even know that fucking back in the day, I made an unsubscriber dance. I had a video that said, if you're unsubscribing, watch this video first. And when you clicked on it, it said, now, I know you might think this video is here telling you to uh, not unsubscribe, but actually, this video is to let you know what I do when you unsubscribe. So, and then it fucking was me dancing around to Justin Timberlake's Cry Me a River with a big fat J, smoking the whole thing. Cry me a river. It's like, yeah. Suck my dick, bitches. <laughs> that was my response to it. They want, oh, from hell's heart, I stab at you with the unsub. And it's like, bro, I dance when weak, sad little bitches get the fuck out of here. You went from me wanting to entertain you to me never wanting you to be entertained by my stuff. Don't you get that? I don't want you here. I'm not collecting Pokemon. You're a sack of shit. Get the fuck out of here. I'm entertaining the worthy. I'm finding the chosen ones. This right here, the live streams are the ark. The chosen ones will come with me on the ark. The rest drown like whores. That's how the flood goes. Not my fault. I'm the captain of the fucking ark, right? And the survivors, they choose themselves. It seems like I'm doing the choosing, but I'm just recognizing the self-selection. That's it. That's it. Everybody else decides whether they need to be here. Not me. I just clean off the riffraff back into the waters where they belong. Ben, you find it amazing what people say on the internet in real life you'd never dare? Exactly. You're right. There's tons of people who are way more over the top online. I am just as ridiculous in person as I am online. Live stream me is real me. You can ask anybody who knows me. That's the reality of it. What up, Space Wizard? K 
Kenny, you can have differing opinions on things and still be civil about stuff. When people say they can't talk about something because it'll lead to a fight, that's usually a huge red flag to you. Well, on one hand, I can see what you're saying. But on the other hand, if somebody does say that to you, they have enough self-awareness to say, I'm not interested in getting into fights. And this particular subject is one in which I'm not able to control myself. So I'm more likely to explode in that conversation. So while, yes, it doesn't show the highest level of emotional maturity if you can't handle a particular subject being able to express that does in fact show emotional maturity right so it's much better than somebody who can't express what's going to set them off and then it sets them off obviously it does stifle conversation but what are you gonna do right what are you gonna do yeah and says i can confirm t bad <laughs> proudly proudly speaking of proudly kensicky got a box here from Kensuke. And we're starting something new. I've been thinking a lot about positive things today. Been trying to keep positive mentality, focus more on positive things because I feel like all the problems that are going on with magic and all the negative things that have been happening in real life have weighed my spirit down heavily. So I'm actively seeking joy and moving away from frustration and problems, all that kind of shit. Right? So there's leaning more into enjoying magic and just goofing around and whatever. But also, in the past, when I've been sent things, sometimes people would be like, yo, that was something awesome you got sent. Put them on the board. But the board is a very particular thing. And we have the box of glory, right? For the lords of the board. But never had anything for gifts, right? And so I thought about it. And I was like, I like the art card thing. For me... If anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, I'll quickly explain. Whoever's on the, the board here at the end of the stream ends up on a magic art card, and they end up in the box of glory. If you make it in five times, you're on the roll of glory, right? So I really like these. These are mementos of each individual stream, and the artwork is gorgeous as well. So it works on multiple levels. I really dig it. So I'm bringing that concept in now as well for stuff I get sent. So I've got a... Brothers War gift box that I'm going to use to keep cards that have people's names on who have sent me gifts. So I'm going to be acknowledging them that in that fashion. And because sometimes I feel like I can somewhat personalize it to a degree. Like I have hand selected this particular art card for Kensuke, right? For tonight. For Kensuke, because if you take a look at this, this is a guy who's scrying into a scrying pool, who's scrying into a scrying pool, who's scrying into a scrying pool. This is the watcher. And that's Kensuke waiting, watching in the reeds. Kensuke is the only stealth lord on the roll of Mega Glory. See, a lot of these guys just bludgeoned their way in with pure force. Whereas Kensuke used slick little waiting in the weeds, popping out, looking for the right moment. Well, bam, maneuvers to get in, right? And so to acknowledge that, the very first card that's going in this box is going to be this, the Watcher card for Kensuke. All right, that's how we're doing it. I very much enjoy finding more ways to acknowledge all the awesomeness that goes on here. Huge, uh, can fans order stuff and send it to me? Absolutely, there's multiple ways to do it. You can use, for your Amazon example, if you want to, you can use the P.O. box that's listed in the description of my live streams or my videos. There's also, uh, I actually have an Amazon wish list that you can order directly from that will put the address and everything in for you so you don't even have to do it yourself. So there's that. If you choose to buy things yourself on Amazon, even if you're not getting anything from me, I have an Amazon affiliate link. If you bookmark that as your Amazon link, every time you shop on Amazon, I will get a portion of of the sale. It doesn't cost you anything. Amazon will kick me part of the sale, bro. So you can straight up support me just through your normal Amazon shopping. Also, there's another option where you can literally send money straight to the game store that I go to. There's a PayPal set up in the live stream description and it's for Phoenix Rising, the game store I go to. The PayPal there is only set up for me. So anything, get, anything that gets sent there is automatically used as store credit. So you can say what you want it to be used for, or you can just send it over and then I'll sort it out whichever way works. We got, trust me, when it comes to hooking me up, we got lots of routes we figured out. <laughs> Nathan, you're damn right you're a bludgeon. You're damn right. The strongest of the positive human emotions is nostalgia. Millmaster, 
Well, you know what? I was thinking, actually, about the nostalgic early days of magic, personal incarnation, Elvish Archers, Aspect the Wolf, all that early fun, and how I had a community then, and the parallels of how I have built this different community here now, and how meaningful it is to me in a different way. You know, it's just, it's crazy the way things work. So now I'm trying to meld it all together. I want to bring more joy for you guys, because the truth is, I am an emotion lord. If you've seen Bravest Warriors, emotion lords are somebody who can magnify emotions and put them into people. I'm good at making people angry. I'm good at making people happy. I'm good at making people sad. I'm good at sharing whatever emotions that I have. The feelings that I have, I can make them resonate with other people. It's a talent that I have always had, and I wish to use that to make people happy, not to make them angry, not to make them uncomfortable, to make them joyous, to make them comfortable to make them happy. That's the shit I want to do. And that's the way my mind is drifting now. So I'm going to keep working on that because it's going to take time, right? The, oh, you know what, Callaway, I do want to actually toss something in on the way that people talk negatively about you. I will say that while my attitude towards everybody is get fucked, the sheer amount of negativity that I dealt with towards myself, if you see threads and things where there's like hundreds and hundreds of people like, yeah, fuck this guy. And then there's everything about you as being whatever, like, there, no matter how much fuck you have, if there's enough negativity, it can seep in a bit. So I caught myself starting to think that people were negatively predispositioned towards me. And I caught myself thinking that when this is the first time in my life I've thought like that. And it's an absurdity because most people are predis predispositioned to be neutral, t trending towards positive. So it was an absurdity that I had to work through. But it was, it was, it's a tricky, the, the thing is, nobody is prepared to deal with hundreds and hundreds of people dozens of people let alone thousands upon thousands it's it's just it's too much it's too much nathan you like this line of thinking well i like that you've been here so long and been such a solid supporter buddy you're getting a card in the box too there's other people are going in as well i'm gonna go back through everything that i can remember and document like i want i want to put as many people as i can in the box that deserve to be there appropriately Ash me, no, you don't have to. Anybody, look, anybody who hears me talking about this and you're like, yo, I want to be in that box and I sent you something, feel free to leave a gentle reminder in the comments or whatever and I'll make sure to put you in there too because I don't want anybody to feel left out. I said that to Carly. I was like, I have a really cool idea. I want to like do this art card, art box thing for the, for the gifts and stuff. And then I'm like, I don't want to make anybody feel bad though. I don't want to make anybody feel left out. And then I said to her, how crazy is it that I have to think about things like that now where I'm like thinking about writing somebody's name on an art card and putting it in a box. I'm like, well, I don't want to make anybody feel bad. Do you know what I like? <laughs> oh. But yeah, I'm going to count anybody who sent me anything. Any, it doesn't have to, you don't have to have physically sent it as well. Let's say anybody, for example... Like, Fulgore sent money to the game store so that I could get some Lord of the Rings. So Fulgore goes in the box, even though I'm going to the store to pick it up. If you're responsible for me getting a gift, you make it in. Uh. Space Wizard, you remember timeouts? Is that still a thing? Yeah, they usually get one on the wheel. We had a, a mega rare double timeout on a recent stream. So let's see what Kensuke has sent out. So I felt like, Kensuke, I felt like you being the first one to go in felt appropriate. You've been a longtime supporter. Also, this little, like, watching and scrying thing felt appropriate because Kensuke has a preternatural ability to be early to a stream. Him and David J, I remember, as being, like, the two fastest guys. All right. Let's use the Botana. I even have a... Look, this was sent out by Bow Falcon, and this is what I use to open my packages. It makes me happy to have all these different things sent by different people because it makes me feel connected to you guys. I don't feel like, I feel like some YouTubers are like a monolith. They're like a monolith that you go up to, you look at, you like worship or whatever else, but like they're, they're there. And I'm just like a dude hanging out with you guys in like a, in like a forest clearing. Do you, does that make sense? I, I probably sound like a fucking weirdo, right? Just some weird shit in my own fucking head, right? Like, what are you talking about? You whack job. Oh, well, it just feels different to me, man. I feel like we got our own little special thing going on. It's really important to me. It's real important to me. I get emotional when I think about when I think about it, especially when I think about it going away, that kind of stuff. Do not like that. No, I don't. Uh, 
Hell's Caretaker. Yep, that's what it was, Ashmeen. Oh, yeah, Alpha Force in Nature. Hell yeah, buddy. Stoic, you have your own... Yeah, yeah, yep. I feel like that. I feel that's the case, man. Got my own got my own cozy little corner that I've carved out with a bunch of other friends. Look at this. What do we got in here? It's a box of stuff, guys. This is a box of a bunch of stuff. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Oh, what is this? What is this? We got the, it says, oh, look at that. The green screen. Ha <laughs> ha. Trippy. Look at the Homelands packs. It says the aftermath. Why does it say the aftermath? What am I missing? Are you saying that this is the equivalent of aftermath? Because this is like the same difference. <laughs> Patrick, you want to send me a box of steaks? Well, that'd be pretty fucking dope. I wouldn't complain about that. I'm not sure about the logistics of how to make that happen, but yeah, I would fucking love it, bro. You fucking, you send me steaks so we can figure out some kind of live stream where I cook them or something, you know? Uh, Callaway, feel honored to have been accepted in the den of iniquity. Hell yeah, well, you have the right, you have the right stuff, bro. Waffle, if you need more pony cards. <laughs> I gave away a bunch of My Little Pony decks at the Genesis event. It made a bunch of people laugh. Loria, show feels like people hanging out in real life, which is a refreshing vibe. Hell yeah, man. We're just chilling, having a good time. Hell yeah, bro. Oh, look at this. So much stuff. There's so much stuff. Homelands, the sequel, even better than the original. Oh, there's more. There's more. We got three Homelands. Ah, ah, ah. And a trick or trade. Pokemon, you're my best friend. I'll drown you in the tub. You touch me, I'll touch. Wow, this is a fucking thick ass pack. Jihad had 19 cards in it? My friends played this. I remember this. Anthony, am I brony? No. Yes! Fuck yeah, bro. You kidding me? My little ponies are fucking sexy, bro. You you telling me you don't see a fucking big booty pony? You want to lift up its tail and get a fucking sniff of Jesus Christ? <laughs> Did you know that? There are like, there are My Little Pony fans who have like, fuck dolls of My Little Ponies. For real, for real. I ain't no brony. I ain't no brony. I never got into My Little Ponies. It seems pretty fucking boring. Hey, Rage! Look at that, man! My friends played this werewolf game, too. I had to pick and choose the card games. I like this shit. Waffle, yeah. That's funny. I, okay. There were people who thought I was a brony because I had a, um, a My Little Pony shirt. But I didn't know it was a My Little Pony shirt. I picked it up at the game store. The shit was all in Japanese. I was baked as hell. And the shirt was just loud and bright. And I was doing a trade-in. So I'm like, I want all these cards and I want this shirt. And I wore it. I didn't know until I got on the internet and people started going, you're a brony. And I'm like, why the fuck do you like, what the fuck are you talking about? Why would you even think I, what, what's a brony? And it's like, you like my little pony. And I'm like, oh, fuck you, dude. You got a fucking problem. You come in here talking shit. Tell me that I like my little pony. Fuck you, man. And they're like, you got my little pony shirt on. I'm like, oh, is that what this is? Oh, well, fuck. Okay, I guess I understand now. <laughs> That's legit what happened. That's what happened with people. <coughs> Millmaster! Gifted 10 memberships. Hell yeah. Pierce, Olsen, Loria, Superclass, Lasagna, Fred, Mesmer, River, Loco, Josie. Bear your shield with pride. Bear your shield with pride. Hey, Francis Yoon, just a little something to tell you I enjoy your videos. Thank you, Francis Yoon. Yoon's a good guy, buddy. This, this is what I'm talking about. People not coming by being like, I fucking hate this. What are you doing here? Get on out of here. Take your rage somewhere else before I declare a jihad. And then go to your mom's house and show her my pocket monsters and stick them right in her homelands. Oh, shit, this is the stuff you can only fucking see here. You can only see here. This shit should be fucking straight up illegal. You know what I'm saying? This should be some fucking future, like, I don't know, fucking future police or some shit. Fu me, yeah, is that right? Is that what I'm thinking? Future, is it future police? Is This is fucking I'm talking, where is it? Okay, hold on, hold on. 
Good. Oh, where is it? Oh, it's in here, right? Okay. <clears throat> okay, everybody, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. We're all going to pretend like I clicked real good. And when I was talking about future police and stuff, that there was literally like no delay. Whoa, the future police. Oh, shit. Like, it's the stream should be illegal. It's so good. So, like, I'm, yeah, I'm saying. Whoa, welcome to the future. Wee oh, wait, can you see my cop car? Hold on. Hold on. Look, see my future car? I'm at the future police station. You're all under arrest for being illegally sexy. <laughs> you and I'm drinking Barks root beer, buddy. A can of, can of the old Barks. Callaway says, would you play an instrument on stream if I sent you something funny to play? I'm imagining you with a plastic bugle or maybe a slide whistle. Absolutely. Absolutely. fucking -lutely. That's the kind of shit that Carly knew to come home with. You give me, like, things that are loud and noisy and goofy, right up my alley. Right up my alley. I'm in RoboCop world. I'm going to shoot somebody in the dick. Get shot in the dick, creep. I'm going to eat some baby food. <laughs> oh, shit, is this a jihad deck? Oh, fuck Yeah. Vampire the Masquerade! <laughs> oh no! <gasps> uh oh. Uh oh. Oh shit, am I gonna? Fuck, I'm gonna. Call me Steve MRE, bro. I'm gonna eat bubblegum from 1988, yo. Maybe a bit of Googling to make sure it can't kill me, because I don't think it can. Pretty sure there's fucking gum in here, bro. Tops baseball cards from 1988. And it's like, you know that shard gum, man? Pretty sure that's in there. Pretty sure that's in there. I think that we're going to have to watch me put this pink in my mouth and suck it till it's soft, bro. Yo, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do like a big old fucking stream fun fundraiser. Fucking suck it till it's soft. That's what we'll call it. <laughs> A thousand dollar fun rate. For a thousand dollars, I'll suck the pink till it's soft. That's awesome. That's fun. Good job, Kensuke. Good job. Man, that's crazy. Shit's fucking older than my wife, dude. Dextrose corn syrup gum base softeners, natural and artificial flavors, artificial colors, and BHT. Spring Fever Baseball. All right. All right. Uh, what is this? Super deck. The superhero trading card game. Oh, shit. Are there, there's two of them. Cool. All right. Super deck. Two players each become superheroes and supervillains and battle each other in this superpowered game. You build a superhero to beat your opponent's supervillain while at the same time building a super... Uh, uh. Building a supervillain to beat his superhero. Succeed with both and you win. But there's more. Each deck has a fucking... Each deck has a different mix of super decks, 160 full color tradable cards. Collect them all and build your own super powered deck. This looks like dog shit. This looks... This is probably terrible. My card game sense from back in the day tells me that this is awful, awful awful right right we're gonna have to check this out it's gonna be fucking terrible this is great kensuke by the way oh shit fucking extra extra decks for it <laughs> right on that's fun that's fun wait till i see the cards inside sweet that'll be fun oh we got what's this it's a fucking old mammoth. Why is this mammoth got white hair? Oh god, it's Yu-Gi-Oh. Battles of Legends Crystal Revenge. Dozens of brand new cards you've watched your favorite character use from six animated... Se six different TV series? They made six different shows of that stupid lame-ass bullshit? Good lord. D-d-d-d-dumb. Alright. 
Five foil cards in every pack. Oh, it's just it's all foil. Okay. Okay. Oh shit! 1989's gum! Oh, we're gonna do a versus! We're gonna do a versus! <laughs> <laughs> all right uh sh oh on the edge i remember seeing this game before like a booster pack or two but i don't think i saw this expansion this is for like the random booster plinko or wheel stream stuff this is great this is great what's this battle cards fight the battle solve the quests win the treasures 10 cards per pack look for randomly inserted treasure cards Scratch and slay rules. Choose one battle card. <gasps> oh, is this a game you play by scratching off the cards? Like that old Legend of Zelda stuff? Is that what this is? Scratch one of your opponent's spots. Like, is this a, a two-player game? How do you play this? What is this? Choose one battle card to each. Decide who starts. Okay, so it is. Scratch one of your opponent's spots. Not life or purse spots. Let me scratch your spot, buddy. <laughs> Red wound symbols is a hit. Take another turn. Blank is a miss. It's your opponent's turn. Oh, cool. This is fucking cool. Oh, there's a bunch of them. What? Oh, there's more. There's a whole bunch of them, man. That's cool. What's this? Highlander? <laughs> Highlander? Oh, no. Is this that terrible TV show? Oh, no. Connor McCloud. Oh, no. From the dawn of time we came, moving silently down through the centuries, living many secret lives, struggling to reach the time of the gathering. <gasps> this is the time of the gathering. When the few who remain will bow to the last, in the end, there can be only one. The time of the gathering is now. Swords fly and metal gleams in this fast-paced collectible card game of swordplay and intrigue. Join the immortals' eternal struggle for supremacy. Don't lose your head. <laughs> Highlander. The guy that made it also made Munchkin. All right. All right. And then we got... Look at this. It's a Christmas present. I gotta wait until Christmas to open it, but I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna break the law. I'm gonna turn my law hat around. Now I'm not, I'm off the clock. Now I'm a sweet little French school girl. Oh oui, papa. Je ne sais pas le vinaigrette. Fenêtre la bouche, s'il vous plaît. What? What is this? It says expired on it. <laughs> Bro. What is this? It's a fucking... It's a... Oh, shit. It's a fucking... It's a Lifesavers book, man. It's a fucking Lifesavers book with a fucking ornament, man. What? Bro. From fucking 92? Is that when it's... Wow. That's crazy. They don't make these anymore, do they? They don't make these. Oh, that's awesome. Man, you guys, like, you may not know, depending, but I've been using this as an analogy for what's going on with Wizards a lot. And I have, like, super fond memories of this. This is fucking dope. That's awesome. And it's got such a retro vibe to it. Kensuke, this is fucking sick, man. This is sick, also. You get extra credit. For the level of care you put into ensuring that you put a label on there saying, yo, this is expired. Don't eat it, dummy. <laughs> That's cool. Bet there's not 12 in there. I know, I wonder. I'm like, what's inside? You know, maybe maybe we'll open it in a video for posterity, you know? Because this is fucking cool, man. This is cool. That's neat. That's fucking dope, man. This looks cooler than the ones I remember. Like, the ones I remember from a kid, or the, at least the later versions. This is awesome. 
1912 to 1992, 80 years? Do they still make them? Do they still make Lifesaver Christmas books? That's it, huh? Wow. Wow. They got two packs, guys. That's it's a it's a fucking two pack. They have a fucking two pack. Sweet storybook. It's two packs of assorted. Two fucking packs of assorted. Callaway, Madeline, the boy next door with the very bad hands. <laughs> oh, that's crazy, man. Oh, that's so fucking cool. This is like, this is legit cool enough. Like, no word of a lie. I'm going to show this to rest. I'm, I'm going to fucking show this to the rest of my family at Christmas, Kentucky. You legit just created a moment for my Christmas. And it's going to be a fucking sweet moment. Because these things were like a huge fucking deal to my family. A huge fucking deal. Like, my dad worked on those gigantic fucking boats that go through the canals. So, a lot of the time he couldn't be home for Christmas. Which meant we would have to postpone Christmas. Which as a child sucked. You don't want to wait. You greedy. You want your presents. You want that stuff. I want my toys, right? Kind of thing. But what we would get was a stocking full of candy. And if my dad wasn't home for Christmas, the one solace was we got two stockings full of candy. And you got to understand that my mom didn't let me have candy as a kid very much. Candy was scarce to me. Hard to get. Halloween was like a religion for me. Ah, right? So the Lifesaver storybook was amazing. It was like a fucking like... 10 or a dozen candy rolls. It was like, oh! So, like, that we had to have that. Every year, in every stocking. Automatic. It was a given. No questions about it. Riots. There would be riots if they weren't included. And so, to me, that was a product that was a never fail. You can sell it for eternity, right? You can always make money off of it. No problem. But, I didn't understand the nature of corporations. Where... The people working at the corporation don't care that the Lifesaver Corporation could go on for another 50 years. They don't give a fuck. They care about making their bonuses right now. How do they do that? How do we get more money out of these Lifesaver books? Well, why don't we just chop a couple rolls out? We're giving them 12 rolls. Why don't we just go down to 10? That's two more flavors we don't have to produce. And then they do it, and it sells. Everybody buys it. They make even more money. Because now they're selling the exact same product, but with like a fucking... A massive reduction. One-sixth of the product's gone, but the profit's still the same. And they're like, woohoo! Hell yeah! Count that money all the way to the bank. And people kind of grumble and go, oh, they cut them down. That sucks. But still, 10 different rolls. Pretty sweet. Lots of different options. And then, like two years later, now we're down to eight rolls. What's going on? Eight rolls? Well, you know, you still got some variety, whatever. Now you're down to fucking six rolls. S six rolls... They're only on one side. You used to open up both sides full of all these different rolls. Now you open up and it's six rolls and they're on one side. Now you open up and there's six rolls and they're all assorted. Now you get the box and it's just like this and you open up the top and there's just a, a cellophane pack with six assorted Lifesaver rolls in it. And now they exist as a two-roll pack that isn't even a Christmas thing, I guess, and it's just like a whatever that nobody's even going to buy. And that was something that could, I would have bought one every year for the rest of my life, regardless of what price they charged. Legitimately. I would have purchased a Lifesaver storybook every fucking year for me and my significant other for the rest of my life without fail. They would have been guaranteed sales every single Christmas. And so my brain went, how do you ruin that? And I see it now. I understand it. That's what's happening with magic. Magic is going the Lifesaver storybook route. That's exactly what's happening. So... That's the fucking sad reality. But this is a nice fucking memento, man. It's cool that it has a... It's cool that it has an ornament, too. 
Good job, Kensuke. You fucking, you deserve, you deserve being the one to start this box off, bro. You have done well. You have done well. There's a Lego advent calendar. All right. That's cool, man. Dynamite milk. Never heard of that. Uh, Grossman, yeah, I already, I already mentioned MRE Steve earlier when I was looking at that gum, bro. No hecatome, that's right, Millmaster, no hecatome, bro. No hecatome. With its weird ass shaped stuff. Oh, so yeah, you know, obviously the summary of the stream is I'm looking, I'm looking to lean more back into just having a good time. Not worrying about the bad shit that's going on as much and just recalibrating into a more joyous state where we can all have more fun. So we'll see how successful I am at it. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for coming and hanging out, my friends. I'm going to be uh, expiring for now, but I'll upload this live stream over on Hatcher. So if you missed any part of it or you want to check it out later, it'll be there for you. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Big shout out to Kensuke for the fucking dope shit, bro. You're the man. This was a lot of fun to open up. All right. Now, oh no, my soul's falling out of my butthole and I died. <laughs>